Hi everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. So I think this is going to be the last video I'm going to make on our um, value objects before we start moving to um, tensors. Um, so yeah, I think this, this will be the, probably the last video on these values. There's one more operation I want to show you guys how to implement because with this operation we'll be able to do, um, at least in principle, uh, we'll be able to um, make a neural network with these value objects if we wanted to, although we're not actually going to because it'll be it'll be too slow to actually use. But we could, in principle, do the entire forward pass and backward pass of a neural network um, after adding this operation if we wanted to. Um, so yeah, this operation is the tan h function. Um, it's this kind of um, like saturation function that takes in an input that could be any number and gives an output between negative one and one. So if you give it like a very um, large positive or negative number, it'll, um, it'll squeeze it into between negative one and one. And so um, the rationale for why we're doing this is, well, partly because um, this was partly because this was one of the functions that um, Andre Carpathy did in his micrograd library. So I'm kind of uh, following in his path with that. But um, the real reason is because with this function, we could, um, this will allow us to have everything we need for um, the basic function of a neuron within a neural network. So here's what I mean by that. So if you guys remember like what, what's happening with it, with a neuron in a neural network, you have a bunch of inputs um, so maybe I'll comment here, like input one, um, input two, and input three. And then all the inputs are weighted by um, the weights, which are the, the parameters of the uh, neural network that we're trying to um, change and solve for. Um, so yeah, we're weighting all these inputs that are going into the neuron um, with their respective weights. And then we're summing together all of these weighted inputs uh, like that. And then after weighting and summing all the inputs, we're also adding on a bias that we're um, just adding uh, with an addition operation. But we need one more thing because right now, if we just had our setup be, um, be like weighted inputs uh, plus a bias for every neuron, then that's a linear combination and um, if we just did that, then no matter how many neurons we had, um, it would all just be like one big linear combination. So we, we need to add in some nonlinearity. So that's what we that's what we do with what's called a um, activation function. So in our case, this will be the tan h activation function, and it basically works like this. Basically, um, after we after we like weight and sum all of the inputs plus a bias. We then pass that into the tan h activation function, and it kind of squeezes the output so that, so that it's between uh, negative one and one. And this also introduces um, nonlinearity into the uh, neural network so that it isn't just a big um, linear combination. Uh, okay, I'm gonna leave that there for reference. Um, and yeah, now we can actually get started. So the first thing to do, and um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of breeze through this because hopefully if you guys have been watching the videos up until this point, hopefully this should all be looking pretty familiar and I shouldn't have to, at this point we've done this enough times that I shouldn't have to kind of explain every part. So I'm gonna be moving a little bit quickly this video. Um, but yeah, if anyone if anyone doesn't understand anything, um, please leave a comment and I'll try to answer it. But yeah, I'm gonna try to go through this a little bit quickly because a lot of this will be basically the same idea as stuff we've already done. Um, okay, so like like usual, we're going to start by importing um, the base Julia function, like the base Julia tan h function, and then we're going to um, define our own function to uh, override what what this will do when it's passed in a value as input. So we're going to say function tan h uh, when it has input a, which is a value. Uh, remember, with the multiple dispatch, we can define what to do based on. Um, what kind of type input it has. Um, okay, and from there, we can go ahead and kind of grab our um, our usual forward pass code and then just modify it like we've been doing. So this is our, our usual forward pass code. This is the one for division, but we're gonna change this to make it for um, tan h. So, okay, um, the way we're gonna do this 
is that okay? We need we need some some number out, which will be the actual value that we're um, getting as the result of the tan h function, and then uh, zero point zero is the um, gradient, and then we're going to change this to tan h because this is again tracking the operation. So it's an operation of type tan h. Uh, only one operand. If it if it had a b operand, it would be a and b here. But there's only one, so just just the a operand. Again, going through this kind of quickly. Hopefully, you guys kind of already remember. Um, okay, and this part, you guys will hopefully just either take my word for, or you can, um, or you can look it up, or you can even like maybe prove it to yourself. But you guys will uh, hopefully just take my word for it that this thing that I'm going to copy and paste in is going to be um, the way to calculate the tan h function. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like figure this out myself or something. This is just something that um, it's basically based on uh, on the uh, micrograd code um, because this is where I learned how to do it. So yeah, like um, credit to Andre Carpathy for that. Um, this is just a formula that I got from him that makes it kind of easier to do. Um, and yeah, this is just a, a, the way of uh, of doing the 10H. In fact, we can even um, prove this to ourselves if we want to. Like if we said, okay, what's the tan h of 10? Um, and then we could also get it this way. Yeah, uh, so yeah, it's, um, exactly the same. So this is just another formula way of writing it. Um, I guess we, we could have even wrote just tan h in there like that um, if we wanted to. But um, yeah, I'm just going to write it like this, um, just kind of keeping consistent with uh, the, the micrograd package because kind of this whole thing is based on um, micrograd. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to write it like that. Um, again, hopefully you guys will just take my word that this is how we calculate uh, the tan h. And yeah, then we, we package all of that into our new value and then return the result. So yeah, that's our um, forward pass. Yeah, again, sorry, I'm going kind of I'm going kind of uh, kind of quickly here. Um, but yeah, hopefully this is looking familiar to you guys because we've we've already kind of done a lot of it. And then next, there's our um, our back prop function. So I'm going to be a little bit lazy and just. Um, just copy and paste some code here. It's going to be our, our usual our usual code for defining the back props. And remember, um, just like we've been just like we've been doing, um, this is just a way of using Julia's multiple dispatch uh, multiple dispatch system to define what back prop is going to do when it's passed in um, a value that we're just calling val that has been created from an operation where the operation was the tan h operation. So again, using multiple dispatch, we can define um, functions with the same name. We have, a, at this point, a bunch of functions called backprop, but they're all um, instructed to do different things based on the type information we have about the input that's going into the function. So yeah, kind of cool thing about this um, multiple dispatch method. Um, yeah, so uh, at this, at, at this point, again, I'm going to just hope you guys take my word for something. So at this point, um, we have some we have some val, and this will be a comment actually. We have some val that was the tan h of um, of just we'll just call it a for example, and our goal is to um, update a dot grad. But remember, we we can't actually just write a dot grad because there's no a in here locally. Um, there's no A in here locally. We need to access the operand of val uh, by going through um, val.op. So uh, just like we've been doing, again, going through this kind of quickly, hopefully this is a review for you guys at this point, but we're gonna say val.op.args, and then the first argument, actually the only argument, because there's no, there's no second argument for tan h. But yeah, this is just another way of writing A Basically, because we can't actually just write a, we have to say val.op.args. That's um, the pointer, basically, that's referencing the first argument. And for tan h, it's the only argument. But yeah, the first argument that went into um, creating this val value that we have. 
and then we're going to say grad because we're um, updating the gradient. Uh, incrementing, we went over the rationale for that several times. Um, hopefully this is a review for you guys. But yeah, the incrementing is in case um, we have to update the same value um, more than once. If the same value has been used more than once to get to our output, we don't want to just reset it every update. We want to increment the gradient every time we um, update it. And then this part, um, yeah, for you guys might have to just take my word that this is how um, how to get the uh, derivative appropriately. It's um, one minus v dot. Whoops, uh, it should be a actually. Yeah, one minus a. Um, uh, whoops, this should be this should be val actually. Um, one minus val dot data squared, and then times val.grad again hopefully this is review at this point but the times val.grad is in case we're doing um the chain rule in case in case val dot in, in case val is not the final output but is um some other intermediate variable that went into calculating the final output and in that case val.grad allows us to chain rule our way back from the final output to um the operands of val so hopefully that's um, review for you guys. But um, yes, that's how we that's how we get um, so we get the uh, derivative for the backward pass uh, for tan h. Um, okay, so let's run that, and then we're going to be um, now ready to actually test this out. So um, yeah, to test this out, let's try out um, let's try out what like one neuron in a neural network could look like. So let's try out something like that. So I'll say um, input one equals um, value 2.3, input two, whoops, equals value um, negative 3.5, give it some tough numbers to work with, um, input three equals um, value 3.9, um, okay, just keep it, keep it three inputs for now, but it could, in theory, be as many inputs as we wanted. Um, and then weight one equals um, value negative 0 0.8. Weight two equals value 1.8. Weight three equals value um, three. Uh, make the bias um, value negative 3.2. Um, and then we can say, and, and then we can say neuron output equals um, tan h input 1 times weight 1 plus input 2 times weight two plus input three times weight three plus the bias. Um, and then we can say backward neuron output um, to go back and calculate the derivatives of these things. So then we can, we can check, um, say print line weight one dot grad uh weight two dot grad weight three dot grad we could get the the gradients of the inputs too although in a real neural network example we wouldn't actually need the gradients of the inputs because we're not because those aren't tunable parameters we're trying to get the gradients of um the model parameters uh not the inputs but we could if we, if, if we wanted to, um, we actually could. And then uh, bias.grad. Um, okay, so, yeah. And I'm just gonna take it um, on faith that this is actually right. Um, but if anyone wants to uh, check me on this, um, if anyone catches a mistake here, feel free to leave a comment and point it out. I'm just taking it on faith <laughs> that hopefully it's, um, hopefully it's right. Um, yeah, okay. So that's it for really our um, value object. Although if you guys want to actually go further with it, 
Um, I'll, I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys something here. So, so this is the actual source code for the real um, SimpleGrad package. And if you guys like read through this source code, you'll see that it has operations that we didn't cover in the videos. So for example, it's got like e to the x and like log and like exponents and stuff. And we didn't cover those in the videos um, because uh, I just didn't want to get bogged down in like covering every single operation. But hopefully if you guys have been following the videos, hopefully you're at the point now where you can like look at this code for um, like this is the forward pass and then this is the backward pass. Hopefully you guys can look at this code and notice that it's just doing the same thing that we've been doing for all the other operations, um, except that it's doing it in a way that's appropriate to this uh, log operation. So the output um, out here is different, and then um, like the, the derivative calculation is different, but the basic setup is basically like the same like general mold we've been using for all the operations so far. And yeah, I may even keep adding like more and more operations um, in the future too. So hopefully, even though we didn't cover every single one of these in um, in the video tutorials, hopefully you guys can now like read these and um, understand what all the code's doing. But yeah, I think this video will be the last one for the um, values. I think in the next video we'll move on to tensors, which will be the actual data type we'll be using um, to make a neural network with. And um, I mean, in principle, like we could make a neural network out of values because we have all the operations we need for the for all the like forward and backward passes. But um, it'll just be too slow doing with, with values. It'll be too slow to actually do anything. So we're going to start working with tensors because that'll allow us to do like faster um, calculations uh, with the arrays, basically. Um, and even though it might seem complicated, it might seem like we're about to do a whole new thing. Um, it's like I keep telling you guys, like the hard part is already behind us. The hard part was all this stuff about like the logic of the forward and backward passes and the operation tracking and stuff. And um, that was the hard part. And for tensors, we're just basically going to be doing all the same things we did with values, except the actual calculations will be dealing with um, arrays rather than single numbers. So the actual arithmetic will be more complicated because, for example, we'll be doing like matrix multiplication rather than just regular multiplication. So the actual like arithmetic will be more complicated, but the logic of like tracking operations and doing forward and backward passes will basically be the same as we've already done. So in that sense, it's like we've already done the hard part and now we're just going to do the same thing again um, with tensors basically. But yeah, thanks for watching. And as usual, all this code will be um, up on my GitHub um, if you guys want to, want to download and try it for yourself. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching guys and um, see you next time.